Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Kung Fu Report, where we talk about classical Kung Fu and its application. Chris, can you please come in? So in the last episode, we talked a little bit about sticking, where you don't trigger the guy. And we want to talk about how that relates to blade. So I'm sticking with Chris instead of holding pressure. And then Chris tried to block until he can. It's pretty difficult if you're not treating the guys again. So that relates to blade work because you can also do that with a blade. You can stick. Just a very slow motion warm up exercise when you're sticking. And you're learning sensitivity, feeling different angles with the blade. And that relates to application because when Chris hits me, instead of smashing, which it's really bad. Vibration goes into the handle, you're wasting time, wasting a lot of energy, a lot of power, and you're probably dull your knife. Instead of doing that, it's better to stick, even when he's coming at you, to go with the energy instead. And blend with what is happening. Okay. And that relates to me in the exact same way because. If Chris attacked and there's nothing in my way, then you just attack. But let's say if I attack Chris and he puts something in my way. Instead of triggering him now, he can resist this. It's the same as a blade. If I touch something, I should be able to blend with it without having to smash his arm around, right? Oh, shit. <laughs> so, that movement I did was exactly as a blade coming around this way. It's or it can be done this way. If he blocks another way, it doesn't matter because you're going around without having to fight to space. So, and this kind of work is in snake arts, it's also in the Hakka arts, some lineages. It's also in uh, Russian Sistema. They do a bigger frame, some Tai Chi's, and many, many systems, right? If you're interested in learning this, please go to the full immersion program on the website, adamchenkongfu.com. When we come back, I'll show you, give you some solo tips. All right, guys, today's solo tip. So, you know, in the third form of Wing Chun, there's this kind of do so, which is excellent. It's awesome. But if you want to play with some of the ideas we did today from other Kung Fu systems, then it's good to be able to move in a way that's more curvy, right? And it's really difficult to learn all the angles and all the progression for that in terms of speed, short power, all the angles and how to defend and attack. So we don't have time to go through all that, right? So I'm just going to give you one basic exercise just to get you used to moving in a curve that is not so stylistic and familiar. So instead of going forward, one of the exercises you can do is pull your hand backward, focusing on these two fingers. And when you're pulling your hand back, do not move your elbow. So you do a regular view style like this, which is in many Kung Fu systems, and you pull it back, but don't move your elbow, right? Just pull it back this way, come back, and then you can put this hand down if you want. Pull it to this. If you run your fingers to your chest, it will stop you naturally with the rotator cuff. So that's your border here. Take these two fingers and you pull it towards that spot. But don't move your elbow. And come back. And then pull it to this elbow. To the side like this. And you come back. And you see if you can do this, just relax your body. There's a lot of things you should be doing with your body, but for now, just start with the arm. When you start to, if you're not used to this kind of snake hand work, what usually happens is that you start to feel a lot of tension here, right? And these, even in the lats. That's normal, so, but you don't want to overtax your rotator cuff. So put your finger there for a second, right? And then see if you can relax where your finger is as much as you can. You want to do about 200 of these a day. And then put it on this, and then back and forth, right? So you got this pretty relaxed, hollowing your chest, and then you start feeling your elbow. Right where your elbow is, right on the inside of your arm, right about an inch below the elbow joint, right? So you can just touch that spot. See when you pull with these two fingers through the tendons, if you can feel the pressure where the finger is on the elbow. So you're pulling, coordinate your breathing with it if you want to help you. And then go to this side, just to feeling the elbow, right? That's a pretty good exercise, just to get you to not just thrust forward, but when you're moving back, later on you can coil and still use your body in a circle. But for now, forget about the circle. Just when you're starting, just get used to pulling without moving your elbow. I know this sounds easy, but it's more difficult than most people think, right? 
Once you can do that, so then you start adding a vertical line to it. So when I'm pulling into my elbow here without collapsing the structure, then lift up a little bit, just slightly. Come back down. Likewise on this side, go up a little bit and come back down, right? And then later on, you will learn a vertical diagonal lines and how to coordinate your body, how to breathe and put your ribs and your dante and your core and the footwork and all the angles of stepping as you slide, how to do it off trapping, how to do it off attack, how to do it with knives, blades, hammers, fists. So there's a big entire course on this, right? But for now, you can't really play with that if you can't coordinate the vulcrums in your arm. So I'm just giving you a basic exercise. All right, train hard and stay safe, guys.